Hi, I'm Nan, Nan Simonson. I wrote this book, Aging Powerfully with Nan. The point being, we can age powerfully regardless of when we start. I'm 70, I'd like to believe I've got 20 or 30 more years. So I'm doing all I can to make that happen. And one of the things I'm doing is that I'm eating whole foods. Whole food, plant-based, no processed foods, because I want my body to sing with nourishment. Anyone can do that. If you're not ready for whole food, plant-based, just add a lot more plants. A meal like this will take care of that. So I wanted to show you a tool, something that I bought and I've used again and again, but we're not gonna use it for this dish because we don't have to. This is a tagine pot. I spent three weeks in Morocco, touring Morocco, and everywhere you went, you'd see braziers with a lineup of these, and they would have sheep and goat and pig and chicken and all these savory ingredients. Rather than making it that way, because I wanna make a lot, I'm using my eight quart um, stock pot. And I've already sauteed these onions, but I don't use oil. I dry saute. So I have two big chopped red onions, threw them into a hot pan. They browned a little bit. That's what I wanted, some caramelization because they weak their moisture. And then I added a little bit of water and did it again and it bubbled up and caramelized. And then they stuck a little bit more, but no burning. And then I added a little bit of more moisture, meaning water or broth and I added a couple of tablespoons of garlic. You're gonna get this recipe with this. And you can find my recipes on nansimmonson.com. That's my website and I have recipes there. And, um, all right. So I've sauteed it because I wanted to get it to this place because one of the secrets of these, um, uh, the Indian foods, the Moroccan foods, the Eastern foods, is that we use spices that have fabulous, rich, deep tones, but one of the things we do with them is we toast them. And you can smell it. This is um, turmeric and ginger, and with the ginger, I haven't put it in yet actually, I'm using fresh ginger. I use a little um, grater. I don't know where I got this, I got it years ago. I took my bulb of ginger, Let's see if I can do this without losing the whole thing. Ah, ran it across the grater, got some fresh ginger that way, leave behind all of those strings, and I'm just going to push that in here. Okay, so now what's happening is turmeric, a little bit of saffron, some cardamom. Um, I even used a little bit of sweet curry powder. Um, gosh, um... I have a lot of garlic in here um, and it's starting to brown but I don't want it to burn so pretty soon I'm gonna throw in some broth I think I'll do it right now this is my homemade broth I keep it in milk bottles just bought those at, on Amazon they have a little cap I make my own broth by freezing the scraps from everything I use my carrots from having um, peeled the carrots, the stems of cauliflower, not a lot of cauliflower leaf or stem because it can make my broth a little bit cabbagey. Um, anyway, I'll get to my vegetables in a minute. Ah, see, I'm smelling the toasting. If I over toast them, they get bitter. Now I'm ready to throw everything in. So what this requires, and I've doubled the recipe. You're going to get a single recipe, so you're not going to see this volume on yours. I have, I believe I have five chunky carrots here. I have, they weren't, well, they were big chunky carrots, but I cut them in a chunky way. And then I have, well, I wanted to show you this. Well, you'll get to it. Okay, leave it in there. So I've got my carrots. I have cauliflower cut off or cut up. I could have used eggplant. And the first time I made this, I used eggplant, very Eastern. Um, my husband's not crazy about eggplant. It, it becomes, um, soft and a little bit viscous and eh, he's not crazy about that uh, so to honor him i'm putting cauliflower and then i have cubes of butternut squash i just bought these from and you can get them in a lot of stores from trader joe's they just have bags of cubed butternut squash i bought two bags because to double the recipe 
I needed two bags. One bag would have been fine if I wasn't doubling it. My feeling has always been, if I'm gonna make a mess, I'm gonna make a mess worthwhile, meaning that I'm gonna have out of this a whole bunch of food for my freezer library of food. You're gonna see what I mean in a little bit. I'm gonna to add to this, again, I'm doubling the recipe, so an entire quart of vegetable broth. I could have bought that. I could have bought vegetable broth. I don't need animal product at all, haven't for going on three years. And so everything's vegetable broth, and I couldn't want more flavor in my food. When you get used to whole food plant-based, or maybe even one or two days a week, whole food plant-based, but you get some savory meals like this, you realize, wait a minute, these foods speak to my body. They feed my microbiome. The only thing that feeds your microbiome is fiber, and the only way you get fiber is from plants. And um, if you love the food enough, you'll eat it and not miss anything else. So we have in here cauliflower, well, onion garlic seasonings, cauliflower, uh, butternut squash, and carrot. I'm adding my own home prepared garbanz beans. Didn't have to do that. It would have been two cans of chickpeas um, from the can garbanz beans. But I make a big pot in my instant pot and then I drain them and then I put them on a, a sheet, freeze them, and then pour them into the zippered um, one quart baggies, um, freezer bags. And that way I have my um, chickpeas the way I like them. I make them myself and season them in the pot. I just did a video on black eyed peas done that way. And so you'll be able to see that sometime. And then I'm adding to that two cans of whole. They don't have to be whole, but oh, look at that. Whole tomato, because I want chunks of tomato. What I didn't want was I didn't want little teeny pieces of tomato. I wanted whole tomato in here. And this recipe I saw on Chef AJ's channel because she was interviewing the creator of the recipe. Her name is um, Chef Levy. And I always do a few changes on everything, but I'll give credit to the people who inspire me to do what I do in the kitchen. And I've never been much of a recipe creator. I start with something that I see or hear, and then I make it my own. All right, so I'm going to break up the tomato a little bit. Ah, did you see that? Because I want some chewy tomato bits in there, but I don't want, if you didn't see that, what happened is I speared the tomato and it just let loose with what was inside of that beautiful globe. So it just kind of right into the kitchen. And I can live with that. I'm perfectly happy with that. Well, once I've cleaned it. All right, so I have chunks of tomato. I have broth. I'm going to add to it some raisins. Can you believe that? That's very Middle Eastern. I could have asked, added chopped um, uh, apricot. You see things like that a lot. Now this is the moisture level of this stew. I and my husband, Tim, like our stews a little bit soupy. And a lot of times I even add some loosely chopped spinach at the very end when I'm heating something just to add more nourishment. Again, more fiber, more color. The more color you have in your, your diet, the more variety, the better your microbiome bugs are fed, the happier they are. Um, so I may, once I get off camera, I think I'm gonna add a little bit, maybe a cup or two more of water. Now the other thing I could do is wait and let it um, settle, let the moisture come out of the vegetables and then see how it is. But the way I know, or the reason I know what it's gonna turn out like is, I'll show you in a minute. I took a lemon and zested it. So I've got some lemon peel in here. Again, very Middle Eastern. So think of the complexity here. When I'm done, and I'm just gonna cover this and let it do, it, let it do its thing, once it comes to a simmer, for 25 to 30 minutes at a simmer. 
but that's going to take a little while. So I'm going to cover it and then show you something. Let me get this out of the way. Okay. And when it's finished, because again, I want a Middle Eastern, milk. I want that, that flavor. Let me show you what I'm going to do. Um, let's see. Can I bend you down like this? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Some of you will not have plastic in your refrigerator, in your cupboards, in your freezer. I can't do that. I have too much. I have literally a library of these. These are Ziploc containers. It's a five cup container. They hold four cups. That's a perfect serving for us. And I have, I can go into the freezer in the garage and pull out a meal any day of the week, defrost it, leave it out all day. If it's going to be a warm day, I'll cover it with a bowl and it creates a, a slower defrosting situation so it doesn't get too warm and bacteria doesn't grow. But this says Moroccan tagine, the date that I made it. This was in September. I think it's about time I eat it. And then this is a seven, uh, a one and one and three quarter quart. So what would that be? That's about seven cups and it's a Pyrex dish. And you can see my tagine finished because this tagine is, I think, the last one. Look at this. Oh, do you see these olives? And you'll also see, look at this. That is today what, oh, this was then what I used, which was the eggplant. Today, instead, I have the cauliflower. Look at those green olives. Now, I won't put the green olives in yet because they'll break down and get um, overly cooked and lose some of their part of the fun is that they are um, that they are they're a solid shape in there and they look good look at this see now I am going to put some more broth in it and see I could you put in more broth now I can put it in later and then it stores even um, better in that I can use this size container but get more food um, sometimes one of the girls will come by um, and we'll have dinner with them and I'll just add more broth to something, add more spinach and put out another vegetable dish. We always, even if we have this much vegetable, we'll have a, a vegetable something on the side. So you see the olives, this is all I used. They were Greek olives, Mediterranean. They could have had pimento in them, but they don't. I rinsed them and threw in a whole bunch of them, and look how nice they look. So, this is Moroccan tagine. It brings me back to my three weeks of wandering through Marrakesh and Pez and Casablanca and all that fun stuff. So, I'll raise you up and say, take care of yourself. Picture yourself living not just long, but healthy vibrant, balanced with joy because you feel terrific, because you've taken good care of yourself. And one way to do that is to eat really well. Have a great day because I know I will. Bye-bye.